2022. It's been a huge year in my whiskey journey where I've easily tried over a hundred different whiskies. You have done well. I don't have a problem yet. One bottle stood out to me from the very first sip and I knew it would have to be my whiskey of 2022. Got what year it was for a second. Also, it does help that I have the humour of an eight year old and that the name is a bit fun to say. This year, it's not a scotch. It's not a bourbon. It's an Irish. As you can see, I'm not really hiding the bottle here, but here it is. Welcome back to Jeff Whiskey. I'm Jeff. This is Whiskey. Let's crack on. Jeff Whiskey. Yep, Jeff's Whiskey of the Year is Dingle Single Malt, a triple distilled Irish whiskey. And man, it's fantastic. So let's jump in with the experience. Not gonna lie, when I first saw the bottle on popping up on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, I wasn't blown away with the design. It just looked like a murky blue label with similarities to quite a few other bottles using the gold foil. However, when I got my actual hands on this bottle, the design is pretty top tier. The stumpy, shelf-friendly height, brilliant. The gold shadow beneath the almost stretched wide type. I feel like it's gone a bit Patrick Bateman. Look at that subtle off-white colouring. A tasteful thickness of it. The little gold dude on the front, pretty iconic. He even appears on the hefty wooden cork. And to round it all off, it's non-chill filtered, it's got no added colour. All I hope is it can handle a good slappity slap. Here goes, don't let me down now. Go for the ring. That was limp. And again. That'll do. I need to sort this channel out. That slap is certainly not getting slap of the year. Overall, while I do like the design and the experience, the heavy murky blue, it's a bit much. And in my view, it could do with a slight tweak to help better reflect the liquid inside. But it is solid, it is good. Borderline great, so it's gonna have to be five out of six Jeffs. Right, let's get this up my nostrils. Cheers. Now, I don't normally bring facts into my review because I didn't have the brains. I'm not a smart man. But it's worth pointing out that this is a mix of bourbon and PX sherry casks, and you can really tell. To begin with, there is like a youthful spirity note, and then that quickly develops into this super fresh Irish welcoming shortbread note. And damn, it's, it's malty. It's got every beige colored biscuit crushed up into this. And then after all that sweet toffee, there's this sweetness just flooding in of peaches, jam, cream, scones. Cream always goes on first on a scone, fight me. Ah, oh, just like a big jammy dodger just dunked it in a honey tea. Dip me again! Dip me again! I'm going nowhere, me son, dip me! It's good, really good. The only slight lingering thing, and I'm not sure if it's really a flaw in any way, it's just, I feel like it's maybe a bit too stark contrast to the other notes, but it's this sharp, slightly youthful, spirity, fresh off the steel note. Again, it's not bad and it's almost in banana territory, but but I think overall it is pretty bang on. So it's gonna get a big score of five out of six Jeffs. But that's enough of that. Let's get sipping. Cheers. That is thick. I could chew that toffee. You also get this funky funk in there. Sounds like someone wants to get funky. Almost like that spring bank farmy barley thing people like. You know when they talk about Campbelltown funk? There's plenty of shortbread in there. And I know that's very stereotypical of Irish whiskey, but it really is like real premium quality shortbread. Okay, imagine shortbread, but you took, instead of like having the sprinkling of sugar on top, you've got like a bit of sea salt as well in there. It's got this, yeah, maybe like salted toffee. It's really good and it's so oily. Every now and get every, every this is so good I've forgotten how to speak. There is these um like bursts of fluty floral notes just powering through this thick ball of digestive biscuits. And then that brings some spice along. Um, imagine homemade rice pudding and there's like the cinnamon stick in the middle. And it's just when you get close to that cinnamon stick, just adding that extra little bit of spice and flavor. Now with this whiskey, it's not one that you could chain multiple glasses together due to just how oily, rich and thick it is. Also, I always drink responsibly. 
but it can't get anything but a big full score six Jeffs on the taste. Wow. Right, so it's now time to talk about the value. I'm going to be honest, it's not cheap. It's just shy of £50. Of course, budgets vary person to person. And being this budget banger, I managed to grab it on offer at a very tasty £40. But is it worth 50 Yes, I would say it's well worth it. I personally love Redbreast 12 and this beats it. Granted, they're two very different whiskies, but they're both sitting at the same price now. And while the cost of this is entering my sweaty palm price, it's going to have to get a solid 5 out of 6 Jeffs on value. These are all the reasons why this is my whisk of the year. 21 out of 24 Jeffs. Now I know I've had other bottles at a similar score. Just this, I knew from the first sample I had, this was something else and then it turned up in a pour and sip selection and yep, I was sold, had to get a bottle. But that's enough rambling. If you've enjoyed the review, pop a like. If you've hated it, a dislike. And if you're new and want to support the channel, slap the subscribe button. Now after that, all I can say is, see you soon and cheers to the next one.